Are you ready to invest in yourself today? Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast. Where investment leader Billy Epperhart teaches you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom. Scripture says in Deuteronomy 8.18, Remember the Lord, your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. At Wealth Builders, our goal is to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, and your investments. Now, let's join Billy Eberhart. Hello and welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast. I'm your host, Billy Epperhart, and this podcast is meant to empower you with practical ways to make a kingdom impact. I'll teach you how to make sense of making money for making a difference, and hopefully we'll do it all in about 10 to 15 minutes. You'll learn how to combine faith and finances for a balanced and fruitful life. And if you like to use notes, you can head over to wealthbuilders.org front slash shop, and you can get a free download for this episode. And so today I want to continue to talk about uh, the stock market and where we are currently in the conditions that we find ourselves in. And those of you who follow the podcast and have heard me talk about where I think we are is that number one, I think we're actually in an everything bubble right now where things are inflated. And of course, we're dealing, as I record this podcast, we're dealing with inflation. As I said in the last podcast, lumber's up, you know, three to 400 percent, for example. And many other things right now are either very expensive and in some cases have doubled and tripled in value. So I will be doing a podcast on inflation. But what I want to do is continue to talk about how you position yourself. For example, if one of these bubbles burst, and of course, the one that I've been emphasizing and talking to you about recently has been the stock market itself. And as I've said to you, remember the stock market functions more like a thermometer it's not, for example, if your body has a fever, the thermometer is not your body. It simply tells us where your body is. In other words, it's sick if you have a fever. So the stock market is not the economy, but it is an indicator. It does register in some cases where the economy is. But as I record this today, I actually think that, again, we're in an everything bubble and um, I'll talk more specifically about real estate and some other things in some other podcasts. But I will talk about uh, some things that you should do if the stock market goes down. And I'm going to give you some information I have not given you before. I'm going to give you some specific uh, examples of portfolios that are out there. I'll give you one that I like, and then I'll give you some others that are recommended as well. And so uh, let's get started. So people have asked me and they send in questions, say, Billy, what should I do if we go into a, a bear market? Remember, if the stock market goes down by 10 percent, we're basically in what's called correction territory. The stock market goes down by 20 percent, where basically we get over into what's considered a recessionary environment or recession territory. So one of the things that I've talked to you about in some of the previous, going back maybe several months, even into last year, both on the live streams and podcasts, has been learning how to look at charts. And so people ask me, how should I know when to get out of the stock market? One of the indicators that I want to give you to help you know that, number one, I'll give you this, is sell. In other words, some people take the position they sell their entire stock market exposure when this happens, which I'm going to give it to you. Others will say sell 50%. But what I will say to you is, is if the stock market goes below what is called its 50-day moving average, then I would encourage you to look at at least selling half of your position. And if it goes down say, three, four more days straight, then you may look at selling the other half of your position. Some people want to be more cautious and they want to sell their whole position when it goes below. Now, this is really what's called timing the market. I believe it's better long-term to take a long-term view, but I do think that selling at the 50-day moving average is a safe healthy indicator, typically speaking. Does that mean it won't just jump right back up? No, it's done that before. But typically, if it goes below, it's 50-day moving average. So I'm looking at a stock chart right now as I'm recording this. This chart that I'm looking at 
is actually called SPY. You've heard me talk about the, it's basically the ETF that represents uh, the exchange traded fund that represents the S&P 500. And as I'm looking at this, and I'm going back to November of last year, you can see how the stock market, once it went down, right, in March of 2020, I've seen, I'm looking back at another chart now going back, then it went down a little bit in November, but it's continued to pretty much follow its 50-day moving average into this year, starting going back to about December up to where we are now, which is in June of 2021. It's pretty much followed its 50-day moving average. Uh, it's touched that average. Let me see. One, going back to December, it's touched that average. One, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like six times, and it's continued to go up, meaning it's continued to trend up. But typically, if it goes below 50, the 50-day 50 moving average, you want to start looking at at least selling half of your position. Now, there is another average. There's what's called a 100-day moving average. But the two uh, that people typically use when they look at charts is the 50-day moving average and then the 200-day moving average. And so as I look at this in the 200-day moving average, of course, we touched that back in March of 2020, right, when the stock market fell because of COVID-19. And as a matter of fact, the stock market really recovered just about as fast as it ever has in history during that time, it's what we call a V-shaped recovery. It came back and has, has gone up. But right now, the market, in my opinion, is way overheated. And I'm just telling you that in general terms, that the market is overheated. So if we see it go down below the 50-day moving average, that's a time to at least consider half of, you know, half of your stock market exposure. So that's the first thing to consider when we talk about, okay, Billy, we're looking at going into kind of a bear market, what do we do? Then the next thing that I've never given you in a podcast, I'm going to give you some real specifics here. Number two is you hear the term when people talk about the stock market or talk about investing, you hear the term diversification. So the second thing to do is what I would call diversify. Now, I'm going to give you some really practical steps. No joke, seriously, that's worth the price of the ticket. Uh, oh, that's right. You guys get the podcast free, right? But it's, so, but it's worth the price of the ticket, I promise. So when we talk about diversify, we're talking about really putting your money or your investments as you invest into a group of uh, what we call non-correlated assets. It simply means if one of the assets goes up or down, typically the other asset doesn't move up or down with that asset. It's called non-correlation. So it's a non-correlated asset is what diversification really means. And it means putting your money, diversifying it over a couple of, you know, typically, usually at least four different types of investments, which by the way, I'm going to give you in this podcast. So that's worth listening to and kind of staying with me. So diversification, I remember some of you may know that I had the opportunity uh, to get an MBA, and I'm only telling you that because I remember one of my professors really helped me understanding. He said, you know, he said, and he told me this directly because I was telling some things I'd done. He said, you know, you think you're really, you know, you're really something because you made, you know, for example, I was telling him where I invested in a particular investment in the stock market and had doubled my money. He said the problem was, was that you doubled your money. So you made a 2X on your return, but you took a 10X risk. And he said, if you want to really be smart, you always correlate your risk with your return. And so he's, you know, it's called risk reward, right? So you have to take certain risks to get certain reward. But what he was trying to tell me was, is don't take a 10x risk and only get a two times reward. And he was saying in this situation, that's what you did because the opportunity for that particular investment to go down. So you say, Billy, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is if, if you take a 2x risk, then you want a two, maybe a two to 4x return. You always want your return to be higher than what your risk is. So one of the ways that you lower your risk is you learn to diversify. So I'm going to give you, since we're talking about where the market is and where your finances personally may be, what is a good approach? Well, 
The good approach in when we go and look at the bear market is actually to get into more diversified assets. So let me talk to you real quick about a portfolio that's been out there for a while. It's called the Harry Brown portfolio. And Harry Brown really came up with this portfolio in the 1980s. He presented it in his book called Fail Safe Investing in 2001. And uh, it's still it's still great advice. And so I'm just going to give you some ideas to hang your hat on. Then I'm going to give you a portfolio that I believe in. Uh, in this one, he's talking about you. Number one, if let's say if you if you have a hundred dollars, and for most of you, of course, this typically would be more, but you put twenty five percent in the total U.S. stock market, or you could just put twenty five percent in the S and P five hundred that we talked about. He's talking about the total stock market. Let's just say of five thousand stocks, not five hundred stocks, but the S and P five hundred represents the five hundred largest stock. So I like the the S&P 500. I like to do it again, as many of you know, with the ETF called SPY. So 25% of your assets in the total U.S. stock market in SPY, but then you put 25% in long-term bonds. And so when you look at that, long-term bonds are basically typically long-term treasury bonds, and those are typically 20-year treasury bonds, just so we're clear. And then you hold 25% in cash. And so you keep 25% in cash because remember, inflation does eat away at your cash, but when the market goes up and down, your cash stays the same. And then the other 25%, he recommends putting, in, putting it in gold. So you have 25% total stock market, 25% uh, basically 20-year treasury bonds, 25% cash and 25% gold. Now that's a, in my opinion, that is a definitely a diversified portfolio. All of those, most of this will move in different ways depending on what the economy itself does. And so Harry Brown calls it the permanent portfolio. It's kind of like recently I got a Traeger grill, you know, one of these pellet grills and I did a brisket on it and man, it was amazing. And I put it on at six o'clock at night and you can just set it and forget it. You put it on 220 degrees and no more than 225 because it smokes real good at 225 degrees or below. And I cooked that from 6 p.m. Uh, on a Saturday night. I think, no, it was a Friday night. 6 p.m. on a Friday night. I cooked it till uh, I think it was uh, 6 a.m. or 7 a.m which was 12 hours. It was a big brisket. So I cooked it for 12 hours. And when I got up, I mean, it was tender, juicy. You literally could almost cut it. You could cut it with a fork. And so it was, it was phenomenal. Well, that's what this permanent portfolio is. It's set it and forget it. You know, if you've ever cooked a brisket before on like what I call a real pit uh, where you smoke brisket and you barbecue it, for, so to speak, you've got to tend to that fire about every couple of hours at a minimum. With a Traeger, you just push the button, set it, forget it. That's what this permanent portfolio is. It's literally setting it and forgetting it. And then Billy Epperhart's portfolio, I'm going to give you this, is what I like. And I have a new book coming out and I'll have some of this stuff in there as well, is that the Billy Epperhart portfolio, because I love to invest in real estate, I like to have, if I'm really going to be safe and, and hold my money in a safe way, I like to have 50% of my portfolio in what I call low leveraged or low debt real estate. It means that I own real estate. And when I say low debt, here's what I mean. I mean that basically if, let's say, for example, if it's a single family house and uh, if I paid 100000 for the house, then I don't like to owe more than 50000 So if I'm kind of in a set it and forget it type mode, I don't like to have more than 50% leverage or debt on the real estate. And I put 50% of my total portfolio in that 50% leverage real estate. Just means half my portfolio of investments is there. But then I also I like to put 25% in the long-term treasury bonds. And then I like to put 25% in the total, actually in the S&P 500. So I started to say total stock market, but in the S&P 500. So that's uh, that's how I like to invest. So I've given you some really practical information about the times that we're in. 
And so I'm, I'm going to come back again, of course, in the next uh, podcast. I'll be dealing with some of these things. And so one of the things that I just want to remind you of is you can subscribe, like, and follow the Wealth Builders podcast on all these different podcast platforms. And if you want free blogs and other things, you can head over to uh, wealthbuilders.org, info at wealthbuilders.org, or you can go to wealthbuilders.org. This is Billy Epperhart. I'll see you right back here on another podcast. Bye-bye. We hope you learned something of lasting value today from this Wealth Builders podcast. If you'd like any tools, teachings, or resources mentioned in the podcast, you'll find them online at wealthbuilders.org. Wealth Builders exist to teach you how to build wealth through applied biblical wisdom in your finances, your business, and your investments. The Wealth Builders podcast is produced by Celine Williams with music by Audio Jungle and narration by Greg Hunter. Wealth Builders is a nonprofit organization. We depend on your donations to keep this podcast running. Please consider donating to us on wealthbuilders.org.